Today we're on a sandy beach on Whidbey Island, not far from Langley. We're on a long stretch of shoreline marked by high coastal bluffs and a few large bulkheads. Puget Sound has more than 2,500 miles of shoreline, more than a quarter of which has been hardened in some way over the last century. Some of it is in port areas, industrial areas, much of it protects roads and railroads that were built on the beach, but an awful lot of it protects residential property. Most shorelines erode naturally. The rates are usually fairly slow, but for a property owner concerned about the stability of their site, armor of some sort is a, is a natural response. What we often forget is that the erosion is part of the process that's creating the beaches. And our well-intentioned efforts to prevent erosion have negative effects on both the geology and the ecology of the beach. Good morning. I'm Hugh Shipman. It's a June day. I hope you brought your umbrella. It's raining. A wide variety of structures are built to reduce erosion along our shorelines. We often refer to bulkheads or seawalls or riprap. Concrete seawall behind me might be typical. Collectively, we call these things shoreline hardening or shoreline armoring. They're all designed to break up wave action to hold sediment in place to slow the rates of erosion. Because armor changes the way that waves interact with the shoreline, it can actually lead to increased erosion on nearby shorelines or even on the beach in front of the bulkhead. Armoring cuts off the forest from the beach itself. It eliminates the uppermost beach where drift logs accumulate or beach grass can grow. And in some cases, armor can actually impact the higher part of the beach where forage fish lay their eggs. The forage fish in turn feed salmon and they're part of a much larger ecosystem that extends as far up as the orca. In addition, by cutting off the natural supply of sediment, we're reducing the sand and the gravel that can reach the beach, that builds our beaches over time. So in many different ways, armoring interrupts and can actually alter the processes that shape our beaches. Rates of erosion on Puget Sound are generally very slow. Most properties experience very little risk from long-term erosion. While erosion during a storm can be disconcerting, it rarely requires a structural solution. Often there are simple changes that we can make on a property that reduce the risk from erosion without recourse to a damaging or an expensive structure. We're at a site where, until two years ago, there was a large, very high rock seawall built along this entire stretch of shoreline. It's been removed, the beach has been restored, the back shore, the vegetation has been planted along the berm, and we now have a much more natural shoreline. Natural shorelines are often a little bit messy. There's drift logs, there's trees have fallen on the beach, there may be debris, um, eelgrass is washed up in the beach during a storm, for example. All of those are what go into creating a healthy beach. Bulkheads are built to basically break up wave action to protect the shoreline, but we often overlook the fact that a natural beach is actually very resilient to storms under most conditions. A wide back beach like this can absorb wave action at high tide. The sediment, by moving around, actually absorbs the energy. The beach can build higher in response to a high tide storm. The vegetation can hold the bank. The drift logs actually can provide some protection from erosion as well. So a natural shoreline like this can be very resilient to big storms and yet maintain the features we're looking for that we would lose if we were to simply build a seawall. Property owners who are concerned about erosion or sea level rise should realize that a seawall may not solve those problems. A natural beach can be very resilient, can address many of their concerns while keeping the ecological values of the shoreline itself. Bulkheads and seawalls are extremely expensive, and so sometimes the least expensive way to manage your shoreline is by leaving it natural or by removing an old failing structure altogether. Our community had a failing bulkhead due to Island County and the Northwest Straits. We were able to fund a restored beach. 
before when you got down to the water over the boulders, it was this wonderful tidal muck. Now we actually have a beach with sand and pebbles. Driftwood has returned. The tide changes every day. Anytime you come down here, you'll see something different. At the end of the day when you're down here and it is so quiet with the birds in the background and you look at all the footprints in the sand, the deer, the birds, the humans, the dogs, it just makes it perfect for understanding what a unique situation we have here. And we are so appreciative to the people that have made it possible for us to even get to this point. For people interested in doing this kind of work, the shore-friendly programs throughout Puget Sound can offer the expertise and the resources to carry out these projects. We encourage shoreline property owners to follow the link in the description of this video to make contact with your local shore-friendly organization. Your local program will offer free site visits with technical experts to help you find solutions for your property and your specific concerns. As a shoreline landowner, you are deeply connected to the Puget Sound and the wildlife that we share this beautiful place with. If you haven't already, be sure to watch our first video where we discuss the geologic processes that shape our beaches. And be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you won't miss any of our future videos. In our next video, we'll talk about the creatures that rely on healthy natural shorelines in order to survive and the changes that occur in our shorelines after armor is removed. We hope you'll join us.